I'm ready to read the beginning of chapter three, Gone Away Lake by Elizabeth Enright. And if you remember yesterday, Julian and, or last, last time, Julian and Pindar were wandering through the swamp and then they saw what they thought was a ghost town. What do you think? And then they heard a loud voice. So the third chapter is called Gone Away. They were so startled that they fell through the boat. The wood was damp and rotten. And then perhaps the panic of surprise had added a sudden weight to them. In any case, they fell through with a crash. And it was as they were hastily picking themselves out and wondering if they were hurt anywhere, that they heard the words the mighty voice was addressing to the summer air. They stared at each other in amazement. Yes, friends, said the great suave tones. Why suffer any longer from acid indigestion? Go to your local drugstore now, today, and ask for a box of Pepto tabs. Julian was the first to laugh. Who ever heard of a ghost having acid indigestion, he said. Portia was laughing too. And who ever heard of ghosts listening to radio, she said. It must be a radio, Jewel. Wait a minute, Julian climbed precariously up on the edge of the boat as Portia held on to him. No, he reported, and now that I look at it, I can see that that house isn't quite as raggedy and bashed in looking as the others. They've got a screen door and there's a rose bush and some bean rows, and now I see some chickens and a duck. Come on, Portia, let's go see who lives there and ask them where we are. Oh, I don't know. Do you think we'd better? Sure, it'll be all right. Would bad people keep a duck? Would they have a rose bush? Portia was not entirely happy about the logic of this assurance, but she had no choice except to follow her cousin, who had started forward with a determined step. In the house, someone had turned down the huge radio voice, and all they could hear now was a low, steady babble and some little chicken noises. The children pressed their way among the cool, leathery reeds. A few obstinate mosquitoes accompanied them, and every now and then there was a sound of a slap or exclamation. Julian who paid certain penalties for persistently taking the lead, now banged his knees smartly against the corner post of a little overgrown grown landing dock. You know what I think, he said, when the pain stopped ringing. I think this swamp must have been a pond or a lake once upon a time. That would account for the rowboat and this dock and all and all those houses being built where they are. Check. And I never heard of any lake around here, though. I haven't lived here very long, remember. They climbed up on the dock and walked it gingerly, on the lookout for loose or missing planks. The reeds that waved above their heads had been replaced by a growth of plumed pampas grass, still taller. And now, as they broke through the last of this, they found themselves on raised land, close to one of the wrecked houses. It was not the one they had been aiming for. Apparently, they had veered a little from their course. But now they were close to it. They could see what a ruin the old house was, with broken windows and loose toothed shutters. Someone, tramps perhaps, had carved initials into a porch railing, and on one of the square porch pillars, a crop of fungus stuck out like turkey feathers. Just like fungus they had found on the dead tree in the woods. It looks haunty, said Portia, drawing close to her cousin. I'd hate to be here at night. It's bad enough in plain real day. In the tangle of rough grass and daisies and 
butter and eggs, they saw that there was a narrow footpath leading to the house at the right, and they threaded their way along this, Julian, of course, in the lead. As they approached, they could hear the radio more clearly. Marshall, I can't go on, I tell you. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. The hens gave a squawk when they saw their children and skedaddled out of the way. The duck took matters more calmly, warping herself sideways like a little ferry boat to the shelter of the lock to the shelter of a large dock leaf. There she folded her flat feet under her and settled down comfortably, looking more like a boat than ever. The rose bush was in full bloom with yellow flowers, and beyond it there was a great burst of scarlet oriental poppies. Oh, nice. Portia and Julian hesitated, then walked up the two quavery porch steps hesitated again, and knocked at the patched screen door. The breath of the house came out to them. It smelled old. Pindar, called a voice inside. Is that you? Pindar, whispered Julian. The name on the rock. Aloud he said, no ma'am, it's not, it's us. Well, who in the world, said the voice. The radio was abruptly silenced. They heard small steps in the house, and out of the dimness, a figure approached, a small, thin old lady. The first thing they noticed about her was the oddness of her clothing. They seemed like fancy dress clothes, so old-fashioned and long and sweeping. She was wearing a dress of black and white striped silk. It had leg muffin sleeves and a high-boned collar made of lace. Her white hair, curled in multitudes of little pleaty ridges, was dressed, dressed in a pompadour, and on top, like a small vessel on a choppy sea, a red velvet bow was riding. The old lady had eyeglasses fastened to a chain as she approached. She fumbled for these and placed them astride her nose. A formality of sorts, surely, since she looked at Portia and Julian, not through the lenses, but over them. Children, she cried. Why, it's two real children. She sounded as surprised as if she'd found herself confronted by a pair of armadillos, though more pleased, perhaps, for now she smiled. A whole lacy set of wrinkles came into view as she opened the door. Come in, children, come in. Why, what a treat, I do declare. What a treat. Her eyes were black and sparkling. They liked the way she looked. I hope we didn't startle you too much, ma'am, said Julian, who often had very courtly manners away from home. No, goodness, oh, dear me, no. Why, it's wonderful to see real children again. It's been years since, but come in, please. Do come into the sitting room, won't you? It's so seldom get sat in. Well, we really should be on our way, murmured Julian, following her, however, with Julian, with, with Portia following him. And I'll stop here and we'll find out more about this lovely old lady and maybe some more about who Pindar is. Thank you.